President Biden has condemned the Hamas attacks and says the U.S. will now ensure that Israel has exactly what it needs to defend itself. With guns as tall as buildings, the USS Gerald R. Ford's imposing silhouette dominates the waters. This titan of modern warfare boasts firepower never before seen on the open seas. Spanning over 1,100 feet from bow to stern, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the largest and most advanced warship on the planet. Built by the United States Navy, this floating fortress bristles with next-generation weaponry and advanced electronic systems. From its stealthy profile to its powerful turbine engines, the USS Gerald R. Ford represents the cutting edge of naval engineering and military technology. And recently, this floating fortress has set its course for the turbulent waters near Israel. And in this video, We'll provide background on the ship, examine the escalating violence in Israel that prompted this move, discuss the strike group's capabilities in detail, and analyze what it all means for the future. There's a lot to unpack, so buckle up for an in-depth look at the U.S. flexing its naval muscle. But before we begin, we would like you guys to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit that notification bell icon so that you don't miss out on any amazing and entertaining content. First, let's get familiar with this gigantic naval platform at the heart of it all. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the U.S. Navy's newest nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, and the first in the Ford class. At 1,106 feet long and displacing over 100,000 tons fully loaded, it's the largest warship ever built by the U.S. This $13 billion Leviathan was commissioned in 2017 after extensive testing and design work to pack it with bleeding-edge technology. Ford represents the future of naval aviation and gives the U.S. unmatched power projection capabilities. The road to building the USS Gerald R. Ford started back in 2008, when the U.S. Navy signed a $5.1 billion contract with shipbuilder Northrop Grumman to design and construct the carrier. This kicked off over a decade of cutting-edge engineering and construction work to turn the Ford from concept to reality. The keel of the new warship was ceremonially laid in November of 2009 in a dry dock in Newport News, Virginia. This event marked the formal start of construction on the first new American aircraft carrier design in 40 years. Building the Ford was a massive undertaking. The carrier was assembled from nearly 500 gigantic prefabricated sections that each had to be hoisted into place and integrated. By 2012, construction had reached 90% completion. The last of the major lifts occurred in May of 2013, structurally finishing the exterior. That same month, the iconic island was lifted and integrated, giving the Ford its signature carrier profile. After over four years of intricate construction, the 1,100-foot Leviathan was ready for launch. In November of 2013, the dry dock was flooded, and the immense warship first touched water during her christening ceremony. However, the ship still needed extensive mechanical work, wiring, and testing before being delivered to the Navy. Issues with new systems, like the electromagnetic catapults, delayed the original 2015 delivery date. But finally, after 13 grueling years and over $13 billion invested, the Navy officially commissioned the USS Gerald R. Ford into active service in July of 2017. She was delivered two years late, but immediately became the most powerful carrier ever built. The story of the Ford's construction is one of high stakes and cutting edge technology, but also skilled American workers. Now this engineering marvel sails under her own power as the flagship of America's naval fleet projecting power around the globe. The construction process was long and difficult, but the payoff is an unmatched naval asset for decades to come. The most striking feature is the carrier's advanced flight deck. The Ford utilizes electromagnetic catapults and arresting gear to launch and recover aircraft much more efficiently. This increases sortie rates and readiness. The massive four and a half acre flight deck can accommodate up to 90 aircraft at once, including F-35C stealth fighters E-2D radar planes, helicopters, and more. Below deck, Ford is almost a floating city with full crew accommodations and extensive shops for aircraft maintenance and repair. The carrier's two nuclear reactors can drive its four enormous bronze propellers for over 20 years without refueling. This gives the Ford virtually unlimited range to respond anywhere worldwide. Between the embarked air wing, advanced radars and sensor systems, missile defenses, and escorting 
warships, a Ford-class carrier strike group can dominate sea and airspace for hundreds of miles in any direction. In short, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the most powerful and capable carrier ever put to sea, representing both the spear tip of American naval might and an immense logistical undertaking. President Biden calls the Ford, and I'm quoting, a 100,000-ton message to the world about U.S. military superiority. Now, this behemoth has been summoned to the Mediterranean. This brings us to the tense situation in Israel that prompted the White House to dispatch the Ford halfway around the world. Earlier this month, the militant group Hamas launched a series of attacks from Gaza aimed at Jerusalem and other Israeli cities. These attacks killed over 1,300 Israeli civilians and injured over 4,000 more, prompting outrage and reprisal strikes from Israel targeting Hamas leadership and infrastructure. However, this has also resulted in over 2,800 Palestinian deaths and nearly 11,000 injuries as the fighting escalated. Entire neighborhoods in Gaza have been reduced to rubble, displacing thousands. Both sides seem locked in a spiral of violent retribution. With tensions threatening to boil over into a regional crisis, the U.S. decided to insert its military into the fray as a stabilizing force. So, in early October, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin ordered the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group to head for the eastern Mediterranean. This deployment of America's newest carrier has two main goals. First, it demonstrates resolute U.S. support for Israel and solidarity during a time of crisis. Israel is a critical American ally, and the White House wants to reassure Israelis that they're not alone. Secondly, this show of force is intended to deter additional escalation by threatening devastating U.S. military action if violence spreads further. Groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, or Iran are now on notice not to exploit the instability. Now, let's look at what exactly the carrier brings to achieve these objectives. The USS Gerald R. Ford's four and a half acre flight deck is essentially a floating air base. The carrier can generate up to 160 sorties per day across a mix of fighters, radar planes, helicopters, and support aircraft. This includes over two dozen advanced F-35C stealth fighters capable of air-to-air -air combat, strikes on ground targets, and surveillance. Their sensors can sniff out threats from miles away. E-2D radar aircraft provide a mobile view of the entire battle space and command and control. Meanwhile, guided missile cruisers like the USS Normandy escorting Ford add another layer of air and missile defense with their Aegis systems able to down incoming threats. Rounding out the group, are destroyers packing ship-killing harpoon missiles and phalanx point defense guns. Between aircraft, ship defenses, and the carrier's own onboard missile batteries, little can penetrate this virtual fortress. Anything within hundreds of miles can be seen and struck within minutes, if need be. This powerful punch aims to deter violence through strength. Finally, let's analyze what it means for Israel to have the USS Gerald R. Ford steaming nearby. America dispatching its newest, most capable carrier to the Mediterranean is first and foremost a tangible show of commitment to Israeli security. Of course, this also pulls the U.S. deeper into the swirling regional tensions, raising the stakes if violence reignites. Thousands of American sailors and Marines in harm's way the U.S. now has skin in the game and can't easily disengage. Having F-35s and cruise missiles waiting in the wings could cause all parties to think twice before escalating further. But miscalculations risk bringing that firepower crashing down or putting U.S. forces in danger. It's a precarious line to walk, but the White House seems willing to shoulder those risks to help restore stability. The carrier provides options to respond short of a full ground war. And now, the world watches and waits hoping that this fearsome naval armada won't need to unleash its full fury. In closing, the arrival of the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group represents America placing its most advanced military asset on the scales to influence the outcome of this crisis. This huge show of force aims to warn aggressors, reassure allies, and keep more blood from being shed. But it also binds U.S. credibility and safety to the situation. We can only hope that this floating fortress won't be forced to live up to its fearsome billing. What are your thoughts on this extraordinary maneuver, and how do you perceive its impact on the world stage? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.